12 years ago, I started teaching others how to trade just for the heck of it. And it ended up turning into a business. A few years ago, I started a trading coach podcast just for fun. And it ended up turning into another revenue stream. So here's the thing. If I can do it and you guys know me, then anyone can. Find something you're passionate about, share your knowledge or your experiences, and start a show using Spotify. Why Spotify? Well, because they make it super easy to record, edit, schedule, and monetize all from your computer or even your phone. And best of all, it's free. So get started today at Spotify.com slash podcasters or download the Spotify for Podcasters app. And hey, if you need any help with podcast ideas or topics, let me know. I'll help you out. What if I told you you didn't have to be super smart to be a successful trader? What if I also told you you didn't have to waste your money on a whole bunch of fancy looking things to be considered a good trader? In today's episode, we're going to talk about why the industry wants to make you feel dumb so that they can take advantage of you and what you should really be spending your money on. A new cyber trader member, welcome. Tier one member. How well you define these different ways. Uh, I love how well you define these different ways of determining trades. Thank you. Jason and myself are blessed with the the dumb gene, um, which in every other aspect of life, people said we'd never succeed. It works in trading. I think one of the, something that, that sets us aside from the rest is, is obviously we're truthful, transparent, no fluff. Um, the thing is we don't, you know, coaching doesn't define us. We are traders first, coaches second. So we're not out here like, you know, we sell courses and memberships and all that stuff, but that's like not our goal. Our goal is not to sucker you in to buy stuff because whatever like that. We're, we're traders. We we coach because we like coaching. Now it's a business and it takes up a lot of our time and energy, which is why we charge a fee for it, obviously, right? It would, wouldn't be smart business people if we didn't. Um, but the goal isn't just to get you into things. So we're not just kind of selling you fluff like some other places. Um, but I think in general in trading, and this goes from the top down with with even like investment managers is I think people often try to sound smarter than they are because it I don't know if it's because it makes them feel good or or if they think that people will take them more seriously. I don't know. I don't, it's probably a little bit of both. Like I know with, you know, with with. People that manage investments, right? Because I have, I have people that manage my investments and stuff like that as well. And part of the thing is they try to make it sound so complicated because if it sounds complicated and you think that you can't do it, you're more likely to pay someone else to do it, right? So it's always interesting because, you know, when I have these meetings with like, you know, different long-term investments and like they don't really know what I do or who I am and I don't advertise it um, as I never do, they start talking to me and then very quickly they understand that I know what I'm talking about. Um, and I, and I, I know my way around the financial markets and the whole kind of thing shifts. <laughs> yeah, it's like, they're no longer using like the big smart words and confusing stuff right now. Now they get dumb again. Um, because you don't need to do it, but to someone who is like new, like if I'm telling you all these fancy words and stuff like that, you start thinking, man, there's no way I can do it myself. I need someone to do it. And, you know, that's that's the game. It's, it's their business. Um, but so in general, in the, in the trading industry, it's a little bit of that. But it's also because like traders have a certain ego and we, we, we need to have an ego. I think every entrepreneur has to have an ego. Right. It, it, think about it like this. We, we, all, we always talk about you guys have seen the infographic about like the, the comfort zone and all that stuff. I'm sure, I'm sure we've all seen that, right? The comfort zone graphic where it's like, there's a comfort zone and then like all the best things in life are on the other side of the comfort zone, right? To break out of that comfort zone, it requires a lot of confidence because you're basically going against everyone that's telling you, no, you can't, you shouldn't. So you have to be confident and believe in yourself and trust in your ability to do the exact opposite of what everyone else is telling you to do. Everyone's telling you this is a horrible idea and you're like, nah, I'm gonna do it anyway. Right, it's crazy, um, and there's a certain ego that comes with that, and I and I think that's good. You need an ego. You need an ego to be a trader. Like you, you need an ego to be a professional athlete. You know, I, I you know, I, I'm never made it as a professional athlete, but I played at a high level, and you know my mindset. Again, if I'm out there on the field, I'm the best player in the world. You look at any professional athlete out there; every single one of them thinks they're the best player on the planet, and it's not because they actually are but they can't make it to that level of performance 
unless they tell themselves that. Do you think two football players, speaking of American football players, right? You think like a running back is out there on the loose, gets the ball. He's running straight into a linebacker. They are, bo they are both going to hit each other head on collision and get into a car crash. Do you think one of those players is thinking like, I won't win this battle? That running back is saying, I'm strong. I'm fast. I'm either going to juke this guy or I'm going to run him over. That linebacker is thinking, I am strong. I am fast. This guy is going to come and try to juke me or run me over. I'm going to knock his head off. There's no game of chicken. No one's looking to avoid anything, right? They, they both think they're going to win that battle. And that's that ego. And you have to have that. You have to think you're the best. So as, as traders, it's kind of the same thing. We, we have to think we're the best if we're going to perform. The problem is sometimes we, we take that outside of trading to the social media or the real world where it's hard to shut that ego off. Like for me, I get to the charts and I know I'm good on the charts, right? But once I'm off the charts, I, I, I don't let that affect the rest of my life. Trading isn't my life. This is the thing I do. You see a lot of people out there where they get off the charts and they, they can't turn it off. So their ego is so big that they have to make everything complicated and sound bigger and better and whatever to kind of justify it to themselves. And it, it's, you know, it's why I see a lot of people in this industry that overcomplicate things. One of the reasons that we've been so successful as coaches, because we tend to do the exact opposite, right? We be dumb, right? So we have the ability to take that complicated stuff and just dumb it down to you in a way that makes sense. We have ability to take that, 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 that recipe that requires 80 million ingredients and give it to you in a version that, hey, anyone at home can go to the supermarket, pick up four or five things and make, and it tastes just as good, if not better. So we're kind of blessed with that ability, but it's interesting because both Jason and myself, we were yelled at that, we were yelled, you know, yelled at our entire life for doing that. Um, so real quick, um, why don't you show the lifestyle part though? <laughs> yep, because that's none of your damn business. <laughs> The truth is, I do show my, if you follow me, I show my lifestyle. My lifestyle is pretty simple, right? Trading, I, I trade and I play with my kids. I started trading so that I could play with my kids, my future kids. I didn't have them at the time, but yeah, that's about it, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not flashy for, for many reasons. One, I'm a good investor. So if you're a good investor, you, you know the, 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 the cost of buying a, a yacht a private jet, a fancy car, not a good investment. Two, super paranoid. I'm from Philly, one of the most dangerous places in the US. I grew up, if you have something, that means someone's gonna take it from you. So I never wanna promote that. Three, I'm just a frugal person in general. I don't require a lot in life. The things I spend money on are like sporting events. I was talking to my, a friend of mine the other day about getting season tickets um, to the Philadelphia Union and how much they cost. And it's like, or, or you know, we're, we're gonna try to go to a, um, a World Cup match when the, when the World Cup is here. Uh, well, we'll probably try to go to a Gold Cup match first, but a World Cup match when the Cup's here in uh, 26. And it's like, I don't spend a lot on a lot of stuff, but if, if I gotta dish out a couple thousand to take my family to some World Cup games, like I'm willing to do that. Cause that's a once, probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I spend on that stuff. And some people think that's dumb and, but, that's that's what I value. I don't, I don't value like I drive a what, is, what do I drive? I still drive a 2005 Toyota Camry, guys. I would love to get a new car, but you know what? It gets me from A to B, so I can't take it away. I can't justify getting rid of it to buy another car that's going to get me from A to B. Yeah, 2005, it still works. Yeah, you couldn't you wouldn't believe it, would you? Right? Yeah, 2005 Toyota Camry. I had it since. Um, I might have had it since 2005. <laughs> now, my, my wife has a newer car. Um, but not, not, not flashy, but she has a newer car. But yeah, I, I got my 2005 Camry, and I think in like 2000, 2008, 2009, something like that. And e every year, I, I have a, I have a, um, I, I have, <laughs> don't make fun of me. I have rules, guys. I have rules for when I get rid of a car. All right. I, I cannot get rid of a car. Unless one, we desperately need to upgrade. So like when we started having kids, we got an upgrade because we needed space and safety. But I cannot get rid of a car unless the cost to repair the car 
is higher than the car's value. That is my, as my, my, my rule. <laughs> Don't make fun of me, I'm trading rules, right? Uh, the cost of so if like a timing belt were to go or like a suspension or axle or something major were to go then i'd be done with it knock on wood because it's not worth repairing at that point but the normal stuff brakes tires battery right yeah because because here here here's the value i put in the car and again you can you can question me why, why do you value world cup tickets more than a car, right? And memories last forever, cars don't. Here's the thing. What do I use that car for? Am I, am I shooting videos? Am I doing promos of this flashy life? If I would, I'd just get a rental like most of these guys do anyway. You're not using their real cars, right? I'm not doing any of that stuff. Am I trying to go around promoting that I'm a, a super trader? Am I going around trying to get business? I, I can tell you what, if, if I were still managing money, I would have a different car. Because then it matters when, when I show up to your house or your business and I try to sell myself, I'm not going to do a good job of selling myself in a 2005 Toyota Camry. So if that were the case, I would have like a Range Rover or something like that because impressions do matter. I dress up in a suit. Like you, you got to do all that stuff because first impressions do matter, right? It's kind of the old saying where it's like, hey, you're expecting a, you know, two, uh, two guys selling you their service show up. One guy shows up in a, a, a Ferrari with a three-piece suit. Another person shows up in a 2005 Toyota Camry with a, a black t-shirt. Which one are you giving your money? Easily the Ferrari. If you have no, no other information, it's Ferrari because you assume that that guy looks like what success looks like. The other guy doesn't. That guy can be an idiot. The 2005 guy can be the genius, but first impressions do matter. So that's a different story. But for me, I don't do any of that stuff, right? So the value of my car is this. Does it get me from point A to point B? Yes. So does a bicycle and I ride my bike during the summer. So if I have something that works perfectly, it's all paid off. It doesn't require much maintenance at all. It basically costs me zero, a couple hundred, a couple hundred dollars a year inspection, whatever funny stuff goes wrong, right? To get me from point A to point B, why would I go out and spend 15, 25, 30, $40,000 on something that does the exact same thing? Because I can tell you a lot of other things I can do with $40,000 or $25,000. I can throw it into financial markets, double my return or half my return. I can buy more World Cup tickets. I can pay off a mortgage. I can buy more rental properties. I can invest in someone else's business, right? I, but yeah. It's, uh, I like the way you think, yeah. And but understand, I'm different. Like I, I, it's build generational wealth. Yeah, put them in a college fund. Yeah, there, there's tons of things I can do with it. But I'm not saying you need to be like me. Again, it, it's we all value different things. Me personally, I, I have never valued material things. That's just in my personality. It, I just, I've, and I never will. I, I will never. I, I, I can get down for a nice watch. Don't get me wrong. That's the one thing I, I will, I will spend on a nice watch. That's the, that's the, that's my one thing. I'll, I'll, I'll buy on a nice, I'll spend on a nice watch because that's something as a kid, I always bought fake watches because I couldn't afford a good one. So I told myself whenever I made it, I would buy myself a nice watch. Like it means it's not necessarily the watch. It, it's the message of like, Hey, you, you did it not to get too emotional on you, but that, like, I'll value a nice watch because for me, that's a symbol of like, I made it. Um, and I'll only, I'll only wear it to like special events like weddings and stuff like that. Um, or like business meet, big business meets. I don't, I don't wear it on the street. But um, aside from that, I don't, I don't really value much. So because I don't value much, I don't require those things. Now, with that being said, hey, if, if you're a car person, if you're a, 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 a suit person, a dress person, a, a bag person, dude, do that. You've earned your money. Spend it on what matters to you. If, Je if Jessica values that nice bag the same way I valued my watch because she's always wanted that nice bag and now she can afford to get it without thinking twice about it, get that bag. Go ahead, girl. Get that bag. You earned it. That's important to you. If it's a nice car, get that car because it's important to you. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Just don't go overboard. Just don't go overboard. Yeah. 
Just don't go overboard. Yeah. Uh, Bobby said the thing is you can also buy nice things to go up in value and get the best. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Yep. It's your money. Do what you want with it. But just, just, just be smart. Just be smart. Well, yeah, and, and the problem is, and, I, and I, my uncle worked in the, in the music industry, so he's seen this firsthand. The problem is, once you start showing that lifestyle, now you have to keep up that lifestyle. What happened to a lot of a lot of musicians, especially during COVID, right? Because a lot of musicians they don't actually make money off of like album sales or anything like that anymore. They make money off their live shows, and when COVID happened, guess what was canceled? Those live shows, and a lot of them were hurting pretty badly. But when you're a famous artist. People expect a certain look from you. So you can't necessarily live a downgraded life because you have to show off a certain kind of lifestyle because that's what's in your music. So a lot of these artists, especially hip hop artists, were going into massive debt because they were still spending the way that they did before their shows were canceled, even though they didn't have any money coming in. And there was even a few that had to resort to going back to like dealing drugs and stuff like that. And there's one guy that got locked up for for being a part of this massive drug dealing ring. And, and they were asking him, like, man, like, you're one of the greatest, uh, if you guys remember Fetty Wap, right? He's like, you had one of the biggest hit singles ever. Why would you ever go back? And he said, I, I he said, one, I, I, I couldn't let people see me living a lifestyle below what I put in my music. And two, he was supporting so many people that he couldn't not support them. Like so many family members, friends that he was supporting based off his achievements. He couldn't bring himself to be like, hey, I'm hurting too. I got to cut you guys off a little bit. He had to kind of, he felt that pressure to keep it up. And it, it, it meant going back to a, an old lifestyle that he had escaped. And, and unfortunately, you know, he didn't escape it this time. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hey, I know there are a lot of successful traders that are listening to this. A lot of people that are very successful in other aspects of life as well. Do me a favor. If you are someone that's, you know, maybe not considered like super, super, super brain smart, but you still found success, let me know in the comment section below. I think it's very inspiring for many people listening to this podcast. I know me personally, one of the reasons that I thought I wouldn't be good at trading is because I didn't have the education and it wasn't until I changed my mindset and knew that I could be successful that I really started going for it. So if we can impact someone the same way the book Market Wizards impacted me, it just helps us complete our goal of of helping traders build confidence and ultimately getting on that path to success. So type it in below if that's someone that is you and I'll see you guys next episode.